Okay, uh, thank, you for, thank you for coming. Um, I'm going to be talking about uh, rescuing a, uh, a 1980s 4GL uh, um, and second, some uh, ancient Turbo Pascal software from the uh, 90s. Now, my, uh, my current client um, runs a uh, human resources management software business um, and has a Heirloom 4GL. It is heirloom, it is uh, not modern in the slightest, um, but it exists with us and is still useful and makes money for people. Um, as an example of, of what the operation is like and how long it's been around, um, this, is, this is part of the uh, building infrastructure. Um, <clears throat> it is a IS232 patch panel. Um, somewhere in the building there was a, uh, enough Unix R software, enough Unix R hardware rather, to um, connect all of those in and there was a uh, um, little terminal, terminal socket in every, in every office and uh, lots of, uh, of people doing um, accounting and all that, all that kind of stuff. So uh, the, the software comes from a, uh, a different age really, um, but is indeed still with us. Now, uh, what is, what is a 4GL, really? Um, now, it would usually be a, a fourth generation language, which, um, which, uh, which means it, uh, it does, it works out what, what to do rather than being told what to do. So like with SQL, you, you tell it the result you want, and it's able to uh, itself work out the, the sequence of database operations to, um, to get that data out. Um, but in our case, it doesn't, doesn't really mean that. It more means a language that's very tightly glued to a database, uh, which makes it very easy to build a database application such as a, uh, um, such as a um, HR management software or a leasing business or, um, or your, your classic A-level project, a video library running block luster with. Um, these are all good applications for, uh, for this kind of thing. And the fact that, um, and the amount that it can work out, um, work out which path to take, which um, uh, how to how to commute a query, doesn't really matter that much. It's more how easily can you build an application. So um, we we have we have this system. It's uh, it, it's in house. It's proprietary. Um, I, I can't really show you much 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 of the, the old code there. Um, you wouldn't you wouldn't want to see the, see the old code. Um, but it exists still because uh, it, it, um, it, it's, act, it's actually making money for people. And in our case, um, it really is. It's a, um, uh, it runs human resources, it runs payoff for people. And so the software does genuinely cause, pe cause people to get paid. And, it's also and so it's vitally important that we get this right. Uh, we, we pay lots of, lots of builders um, who are much bigger than us. Um, and uh, getting it wrong isn't, isn't, really, isn't really an option. Um, but uh, it, software is from a different age, and um, uh, whilst it, it still compiles under, as, as a, under Linux, um, it originally was built under, uh, I, I believe, either um, PA RISC or uh, um, old, old version of Spark um, under SunOS. Um, these days it compiles under a 32-bit Red Hat. Um, obviously, that's, that, that's not an option um, for... So, ah, sorry, I'll, I'll do my best. <laughs> Uh, yes, so um, it, uh, it, it, um, it, it still compiles as a 32-bit um, binary. Um, so yes, that, that, that's, now par that's now something from the past. Um, we can't have it last forever like that. So um, we need to do something about it. And um, even compiling it now is, now is quite hard. Um, the knowledge for how it all works has, has gradually decayed away. And we're left with, with just um, its behavior. So we, we have users of the language. We don't have the language authors themselves around to um, um, push, it forward, push it forwards. So what we need to do is, um, is, sweep, is sweep, it out, sweep out this 4 year runtime from underneath it and replace it with, um, with something new. Um, and that's what I've done uh, using Perl. So, 
So uh, imagine you're a C programmer in the 80s. Um, your, your boss has asked you to, to make a, a 4GL of some kind um, quickly. Um, what do you need? Well, first, you need a, a database, and that is uh, CISAM. Um, I think it's an Informix product. Um, I think downstairs in the office there's a bit of a big, big stack of, um, of uh, uh, manuals for it. Um, I, I believe it is, uh, it is expensive, or at least what was expensive. Um, and it is a, uh, a C API to a non-SQL database, so uh, already no SQL database. Um, and there, there we are. Um, the other thing we need, of course, is a, is a programming language. And you need to make one of those um, on the cheap. You see, this is uh, 1987. Um, it is before uh, Perl 1.0 hasn't been released yet. Um, GCC, one, GCC 1 came out in, in May, I, I think. Um, so, so free tools for this kind of thing don't, don't really exist. So, um, we've, uh, so we have to write one. And we need a, a programming language on the cheap. So let, let's take a look at it. I have, an exa I have some example code. Yep. Right. So um, there is some sample code which, I, which I've uh, put together. Um, it, it has some odd features. You can see all the, the assignments are backwards compared to everything else. Uh, it it has, um, has logical line numbers, much like, uh, much like basic. And, and indeed, uh, go to's and uh, go subs, uh, much like basic, but they do exactly what you expect. Um, And uh, you also also see the, the built-in database munging, um, where column uh, co where fields from, from a column are magically glued into global variables. There's no there's no other class of variables. Everything's a global. And uh, some some va some hack put in to handle uh, when um, I/O fails, which just just about does. And it, it, it is line structured. So here you can see a, a, line, a line continuation operator as uh, new lines are, um, are part of the syntax. Uh, what you can't see there, of course, is, the, is, the, is, um, is types. Now, it is strongly-ish typed um, by virtue of being, being database. So every, every column has, has a type, and therefore every variable has a type. Magic. So in um, in in real life, uh, this this get, gets compiled to a, to a bytecode and then uh, and then run by run by some ancient C code which doesn't does indeed still compile. Now one one fun thing about about the um, about about the types is that we have uh, dual vars. I, bl I, bl I don't know if this is the first existence of, of them. Um, I have a kind of example which, which might not be, might, might, might be clearish there. So um, you can declare a, uh, a column as a enumerator type. And as a, uh, in a numeric context, it by it's to the, the number. And in a string context, it'll magically become a string, being the uh, being the string representation of the uh, enumeration, which is either, either very nice or um, very very alien, and uh, it it does get used in practice. Now this this code we, we want to run it and parse it, so we want to build a parser, so we have regex grammars. This is um, Simon Cousins' um, module for um, writing a parser. It let, lets you build a, build a parser from, a, from, from recursive regular, regular expressions. Um, there's no need to write a separate lexer like you would if, if you're using um, uh, lex and bison to write a parser. Dead simple. Uh, not, not massively fast, but um, as long as, as, long as your, your code's not too big, you're okay. 
So, uh, and of course, it's quite easy. But if you don't know what the code supposed, what it's even supposed to do, you, you can go through it step by step and uh, build up your um, build your parser to, to match what you have. So we do this, and back to our example. So here I am looking at uh, the line, looking at line 50, the code. Um, which we can explode out into uh, into a nice little parse, parse tree like that. Um, and take a closer look at that. Nice and simple for doing doing an assignment. And then we have our our grammar for doing this. So it's all it's all regexes all the way down. You start at statement set. Um, and operations, assignments, blah, blah, blah. And uh, you end up building a, building a, a parse tree, which turns into a, um, uh, into a um, Perl data structure, so a uh, hash of hashes, eventually. And there you are. You get data. Now, that code, that was the simplest line in the code. We have, we have a, worse, a worse one. Now, hit a, line, hit a line like that, which I mark, marked with the uh, light, lightning strike there, and it's horrible. How does it even work? You have a, uh, uh, a Perl style EQ there, which, is, which just means equality operator, not assignment. Some, uh, some, ra some ra random calculations, a line continuation, and another... another um, um, Arithmetic and lo lots of questions from that. So you, you first start worrying about wh about whether you can make regex grammars handle the um, evaluation order correctly. So with with the um, with a the multiplication there, does that mean you're adding three to TPS num, or does it mean add one then multiply the whole the whole lot by three? And there's not much you can do there apart from uh, find, the, find the, the old runtime, run it, and see what happens. Now, turns out, in practice, everything's done in order. So 4GL doesn't really mean 4GL. Everything happens in exactly the, the order here. It really is, turns out, a, uh, a single a, a, an assembler for a single register virtual machine. So here you have on means whack number into accumulator, compare with accumulator, set accumulator again, add one to accumulator. All very neat. And Vregex grammars let you do that quite nicely. So you end up with a, a, with a nice linear parse tree. And with that, you can, you can build your, um, your runtime or you uh, first pre-process all, all the lines. You parse the lines one by one. Um, regex grammars um, doesn't give, uh, it, it's a regex, so it just tells you it matches or doesn't match. So easier to um, do it all line by line and um, see, see where it fails, gives you good, good output. And then you, uh, you flatten the resulting parse hash from regex grammars. Um, you make a big array. And you execute it. In practice, that looks like this. So you have your array of lines. You have the um, regex, which is dollars line parser. And there's this. Because it's Perl, there's a ma magic sigil. If it's dollars forward slash is a hash, then um, you, have a, you have data. Now data basically looks like a a deep um, pearl hash of hash of hashes. And there you are. So in summary, laziness does, has, has remained a virtue since the uh, mid-80s. Next.
Hooray! <laughs> so, um, uh, before I go into a game, I'm going to show a, uh, a demo using, uh, using Perl. As turns out, you can do this. So, uh, demos need, uh, need harder to run on. And um, when I was fiddling around with these things, those were, those were two nice bits of hardware you could write demos on. Um, there's a, there's a, an Acon kit, there's some, a Commodore kit. But of course, all, all, all that's been and gone now. We now have OpenGL. That is the uh, OpenGL rendering, rendering pipeline. You pop your, you pop your um, objects, your um, um, vertices in, in at the top, and app falls at the bottom is your, uh, your bitmap to display. And Perl lets you do that. Uh, it has bindings for um, um, SDL kind of do, SDL.pm kind of does OpenGL, but they recommend you use OpenGL.pm. Which uh, gives you most of the um, of an old version of OpenGL. I think we're on like 1.6 now, um, but there's there's enough fun stuff in um, in uh, in uh, 1.2 to uh, do some stuff. So um, show you how that works. So making a uh, an object is is actually pretty pretty straightforward. Um, chopped off the top there is your uh, is your use use OpenGL, and um, it's uh, it's neatly packaged in in Debian and Ubuntu, so it's dead easy to uh, to play with. Um, now what we're doing here is we're defining a uh, a polygon with uh, with four corners, so a square that fills the entire uh, viewport. Um, we give um, each corner its its own RGB value, and we make one of the uh, the corn make make, make the blue value um, increase continually. So I can show you what it looks like. There we are. See, it gradually changes color. Now, to make all that work, you have to define uh, shaders. Now, um, which, which are the um, the parts of the pipeline which you, you can in OpenGL which you can define and add your own code to. Uh, nowadays, you can give it um, code in, in a C like language, and it'll it'll run it in the GPU, and sh should go um, nice and fast. So, first we have a vertex shader. Uh, this takes all the corners of all the um, vertices, all the corners of your of your shape. So in our case, um, four points of a defining a square, and um, you can do stuff to them. This is this is a really this is a minimal example. It just passes passes the data straight through. Um, and the more interest the more. Um, common one is uh, is the color sh is the is the uh, fragment shader, which is a program which runs for every every pixel in your uh, in, in the output, and here we just take the the color coming in coming in from the previous stage and assign the output stage. Uh, dead simple, doesn't do anything, and so you end up with uh, oh, flickering with our little square. Like that. Now, you can do a more interesting one. So, you can, you can combine Perl and OpenGL shaders quite nicely as you have your, uh, your string processing um, um, capabilities up there. So, I define a array containing a load of random points at the top, whack them all into a, um, in, into a Perl string. And just mag magically whack it into the um, uh, into the shader source code. So this is in the semi C like language. There's a uniform, um, I think, 
uh, I think uniform means constant, roughly, I'm a bit vague on this, and vec3, uh, vector with three points. Um, and then we have a program here which this runs for every, every pixel, go, goes through, goes through the list, this list, of, list of, um, of points, works out how far you're away from one of these, the pixels away from one of these points. Um, we can cunningly use the color as we def defined the, uh, the color to vary across, across our, our frame. It's a bit of a hack. And if the, if the pixel is close to one of these points, um, we make it white. And as the color, cha as the color changes, the points, the whole um, kind of view viewpoint moves across. And so we magically get a star field. And if you look closely, the stars moving across there. It's done in Perl. It's, uh, it's done in Perl, but running on the G in GPU. Um, we put it in, in a dark room. Um, there's your, your classic demo effect from the 80s. Um, thanks to Perl. OK, that's, that's demos gone. Let's write some games. Okay, so I saw someone wearing, wearing, wearing a, a Pascal T-shirt. I'm glad we have, all, hope we have more fans here. Um, so uh, Pascal was, was, um, was quite nice. I quite like it. Some, some people don't. Uh, and so Pascal had an um, object, object orientation, and the Windows version came with, with a very nice um, um, GUI library. Um, I think it's rather was the... Uh, was it, the foundation classes, which weren't very nice, nice either. The compiler was lovely. It does all your um, built-in range checking and all that stuff. It had, had the magic uh, IDE. Um, it compiles instantly on, on, your, uh, on your 386. Um, system library wasn't so good. But uh, back from the, the 80s, uh, well, not the 90s, I, I, I have a couple of games that I wrote in it. And I um, thought it would be nice, nice to see if I could, um, if I could play them again. Excuse me. Okay. Now, um, Pascal. Pascal nowadays. So we now have um, um, to Pascal. I, I don't know if it's still 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 being being maintained by whoever is who uh, has it these days. Um, there is free Pascal now. It's quite a nice compiler. Um, it does has loads of random options for um, really checking your code. So uh, making buffer overrun is really hard. Um, that's, pre-Rust and all that. Now, my code was written, written using a, uh, a graphics library. And front page looks like that. So copyright Borland, uh, copyright some guy. Who knows if it's, uh, if, if it's good nowadays. So the solution is to um, replace it and stop it out. So not being great with Pascal, uh, I've replaced it with whacking data to stun it out. So uh, you have a little function to, uh, to replace all your draw oblongs and draw squares and draw circles and just whack it out it into uh, stud out. And you have a, a pull process on, on the, other, on the other, other end to uh, pick, pick up the data. And you run it. It looks like that. You have code. And it works. I did. Now, who would like a game?
Let's break my scheme for a minute. Okay, in theory, if you like a game. <laughs> Anyone? Free player? <laughs> See if it all works. Uh, you have to work out which, which, which colour you are. And hopefully, does it move? Is that happy? You will lose. Do the buttons work? Ah, okay. I'll just try and unplug and replug that maybe. See if that works. Run that again. Is that now happy? Yeah, that sucks. Okay, tell you what. <laughs> Can I plug in three? Yeah. Is that going to play? Try the um, D-pad, maybe? No. Ah, oh, sorry, guys. Well, that worked last time I tried it. <laughs> uh, thank you very much. <laughs> Any uh, questions? It probably was, yes. I was just curious what gave you the idea to do that, because I never would have thought of it. And I remember Turbo Pascal very well. Um, why, why, why did he do this? Um, I, just what gave you the idea? I met an uh, uh, old friend uh, a few months ago, and um, he, he said he had a disc, a disc of these games um, on him. Um, and I, I tried, them, tried them in wine, and um, it broke. Ah. So... <coughs> So, you had, to get you had to get so I, I, I had to recover them. Um, what I wish I could have shown you was a, a genuine um, uh, mid '90s um, play, play bug in Tron, um, by which you may have noticed all the um, you could you could cross all um, all the colours, and it would um, would allow that, uh, which uh, which I reproduced perfectly. It's not a question, it's really just a comment, which is ironic, but I also did work recently on a 4GL with Perl, and I just ended up by putting some of it line by line from the 4GL to Perl, and your variant appears to be particularly nasty. I mean, it, generally it seemed to be a sort of bastard cross between BASIC and Pascal, and that looked more BASIC, whereas well, I, 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 my stuff looked like, more like Pascal. That looked awful. <laughs> I think we've... we've been, been blessed by the original author being having been on a, I think on a, on a, on a very tight deadline, so um, any advanced parsing was was just w well out and um, 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 as little as po little as possible to um, get a working thing. Um, we have, for this project, we, we, we did originally originally try doing a, a line by line um, conversion of it, but um, uh, found the bugs were just accumulating uh, too quickly. To um, there's, there's, there's lots of little nuances in, in a thing like that. And it's, it's, there's a lot of code and it wasn't practical in the end. Okay. Okay, thank you very much. Before, thank you. <laughs>